but as a safety driving car, I'm pretty sure you'll be really really happy about it. Hey guys, this is Jerry, welcome to the channel. Today we are driving the 2024 BYD Dolphin. The BYD Dolphin is a small to medium sized hatchback. This is built on the full EV platform. Today we are having a quick walk around and test drive on this vehicle. In terms of pricing, the BYD Dolphin starts at $49,000 in New Zealand. If you're on this particular one, which is the extended range, the pricing right now is $55,900 plus ORC. But there are deals going on, so if you're looking to purchase one of these in New Zealand, especially around the Waikato region, do contact Abit BYD in Hamilton. I'll leave Carl's contact details down below. Anyway, inside, it's really spacious actually. Let's get out and see how it looks like from outside. All right, so this particular vehicle is finishing the white color with the two tones of the black roof and the silver bonnet. Design-wise, looks really cool. Eh? I definitely love it. At the front, we get a BYD logo with the cameras and full LED headlights that's available. Black trim and some black trim underneath too. And all the BYD Dolphin has 17 inch alloys in New Zealand market. The alloys looks quite nice. It's the proper alloys like that. On the side, again, black trims around windmill and door covers. We got privacy glass. And we got some additional cool design over here. So yeah, overall, look-wise, I love the look of it. From the rear, that's the running through tail lights. Looks very cool, lighting tail lights look. So yeah, overall very nice. We have built your dreams logos inside, so you won't be able to take it out anyway. But BYD Dolphin, that's outside. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, opening the boot, we get about 340 liters of boot space combined, if you combine the lower tray and the top tray. On the top, this is a little bit limited to be fair, the length is a little bit limited as well. But being a small car, I assume this is reasonable. You are getting a little bit loading gap between the boot and the bumper. Anyway, boot isn't that important for a small car like this. Let's have a look at the rear space. First thing, see how wide or how long this base is. It's going to be very, very comfortable for the driving. This is my sitting position. I'm about 178 centimeters tall, so I've got tons of leg room. Good amount of headroom. My head is close to touching the roof. Someone over six foot will struggle a little bit, but the seats are good quality. They're not full leather. I believe there is some sort of sweet finish in the center, but they are premium. USB-A and USB-C charging. Additionally, we have small pockets at the front. It's going to be make it reasonable. Build quality on the door side is okay. There are some plastic contrast with a little bit leather finish overall. And the most important part is at the front. The seat itself, again, very wide opening and good amount of support. We are getting electric seats on all the BYD Dolphin trims. That means it's going to be easy for you to adjust your seating position. In front of us, traditional BYD steering. If you have driven something like the BYD Adult 3, this is pretty much identical or similar if you want to call it. In front of us, we get a small display, 5 inch display. It shows you all the information you need, but it's on the smaller side. Compared to that, this is a much bigger screen. This is 12.8 inch, I believe. So massive basically for the size of the vehicle. And we additionally always have this party trick. You can do a vertical, or horizontal, whichever you like, for your apps, for your music, whatever you like. Screen response time is really, really good. You are getting tons of settings under um, vehicle safety and energy, things like that. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto are standard. Additionally, we also have all the 360 camera that's available on the BYD Dolphins. The camera is okay quality, so good. Storage over here, storage underneath, USB charging, cup holders, and a wireless phone charging pad on here. The handbrake is over here, auto hold is over here, and your gear selector is actually located around the center console. I love this particular design, so it's quite cool to have this, 
but I wish these buttons are a little bit easier to press or to push. Sometimes pressing this makes it a little bit tricky sometimes. Anyway, um, they are easy to locate. Overall storage, not bad. We are getting additional storage underneath the center console. Again, not too bad. Build quality wise, there are some plastic over here, like you can see in the center, but where your arm rest goes in the center on the side, they are premium and the leather finish on the steering are quite premium too. On top of that, we also have a sun roof or glass roof on the top. It's okay for a small car, I guess you'll be having fun of it. Only things when I open it, the no it's quite noisy, the motor, I'm not sure if it's just this particular car or if it happens to all the other vehicles. Anyway, let's get the seatbelt on and go for a test drive, see how it goes. All right, we're on the road. First thing you notice on EV vehicles, they are just dead quiet when you are driving at low speed. Unfortunately, I couldn't turn off this annoying sort of ambient sound when we are driving at low speed. You can hear that, and then when we go over 35, it disappears. I don't know why. Must be something about the interior change or anything like that. If you know that, let me know in the comment. Anyway, once we go up the speed, there's no initial, there's no music sound, of course. And today is very wet, so the noise or something, visibility isn't going to be good. Speaking of visibility, on this vehicle, the front glass is totally okay. The side, I do find with my sitting position, the top one is a little bit too low for me. So sometimes you feel like it's blocking part of the view. The rears are okay, the screen isn't particularly large, but I can see most of the things. So I'm going to call it average in terms of the visibility. Being a small car like this, it's acceptable. In terms of driving, the power-wise, this particular extended range has got 150 kilowatt power and 310 newton meters of torque, which makes it relatively okay in terms of driving. It's not the fastest in terms of the acceleration, but it's got plenty of power for a hatch style vehicle like this. We can turn it around the corner. Handling wise, it's soft, it's a little bit spongy, it's floating on the surface. It is, isn't aggressive handling, but it takes the road okay averagely. And this, additionally, this vehicle has a 60 kilowatts of battery, obviously BYD blade battery with the LFP technology. In terms of real world driving, WRTP range is about 427 kilometers combined in real world. I would say take about 10 to 15% detection, depends how you drive, of course. In terms of noise, you can definitely pick up no road noise on this vehicle. We're driving in a rainy condition like this. But you're not getting much of a motor noise since it's a EV. And cruising along, just and just driving along this 50k zone, it's fairly quiet. It's okay on the noise level. Suspension is also on the soft level as well. It's not aggressive, it's not sharp. But at the same time, it takes all the small potholes. And the indicator sound definitely sound nothing else compared to other cars. Very unique indicator. like that the sound is interesting and in terms of driving this is front wheel drive only you can feel the steering is talking to you most of the time but going around the corner if you do it push a little bit harder you will feel the uh, traction control kicks in things like that 
Anyway, let's quickly test a little bit on the performance. Let's go to the spot driving just to see how it goes. Acceleration. You can see with the wheel spinning. It's all right. The initial kick is very gentle, actually. I think it just happens to all BYD cars in terms of how they work on their um, acceleration or performance or pedal response, things like that. Handles, all right. Yeah, it's always quite smooth, but nothing Moral aggressive. So there are quite a different driving mode, a few different driving modes you can select it's from eco to normal to sport. I guess sport is where you have a little bit more fun to make use of the 150 kilowatts of power. Just like that. It's all right. Right, let's try to turn that off just so I don't get all the ping sound anymore. All right, we have no one behind us. Let's slow down just a little bit. It definitely struggles for traction control over there. It's very wet today, I do apologize. So yeah, once you get the traction, the acceleration is very smooth, it's continuous. Nothing exciting, but it's totally like gentle approach to its acceleration, which is totally fine actually. I'm traveling on, let's say, 70 to 80k speed. The seats are very, very comfortable. You can feel the support on the seats, the cushion is soft. The suspension is relatively soft as well. There's not much shakes around these cars, around this country road or country-ish road. It's just relaxing to drive travel like this. Look at that, around the roundabout, that's pretty good. The speed acceleration, very responsive on the sport mode, of course. Let's test the brake, it's good. Right, let's test the Libby acceleration here just to see how this goes. We have no one behind us. We are pretty safe. Let's go from 20. It definitely struggles for the traction on a wet day like this, especially being a front wheel drive. After that, it's gentle. Definitely feels like just proper 150 kilowatts of power acceleration. You can feel the power just gradually going on. It's not massive like torque or anything like that. Driving a motorway, relaxing. It's pretty relaxing. Has all the bells whistles you would expect these days in terms of the adaptive cruise control, blind spot, steering assist, and traffic sign recognition, things like that.
It is a little bit noisy though. I'm not sure if it's just the weather or the road or the vehicle itself. I do feel the noise level today is a little bit rough on this country road, sort of country motorway. Brake is gentle, okay, relatively okay. Um, speaking of the braking, we get two regeneration levels. One is standard, one is high. So we can press that to change. So once you're on high, you feel a little bit stronger brake regeneration. It's not massive though. It's, just, it's more still on the gentle side and it's not one pedal driving either. Just like the Eto3, the regeneration is quite minimum. If it's on standard, it will, it's almost like cruising like a petrol car to be fair only until you come to a very close to stop. Let's go through some country road just to see how this like. Even on normal mode, it's got plenty of power you need. You can feel the vehicle is talking to you. Handling's okay. Soft again, it's on the soft level for sure. Sometimes you feel like these corners need to slow down just a bit more. Acceleration is fine. Let's maybe go back to the spot mode just to see if that changes anything. I feel like the steering does change a little bit, not by much, from normal to sport. Most part is just a paddle response to be fair. Driving on these country roads feels okay. School zone ahead. Let's just slow the warning from the navigation, which is actually quite a lot of manufacturers use this sort of navigation these days. Anyway, most people are going to use Apple CarPlay, Android, all those things like that, to be fair. Again, driving wise, I think it's yeah, not bad at all. Handling not as sharp as some of other EVs. Yeah, you are going to get a little bit more body roll over there, just like that. It's definitely more of a comfortable vehicle compared to a sporty vehicle like some other EVs designed to be. But as a city driving car, I'm pretty sure you'll be really, really happy about it. Seats are comfy supportive and suspension are very soft the noise level is a little bit high though on this particular country road not sure how it's like in real life driving when the weather condition is better Anyway, I think that's pretty much all I wish to talk about in this particular video about the BYD Dolphin. Again, if you're looking to purchase one of the BYD Dolphins in New Zealand, especially around Waikato area, do contact Abbott Hamilton BYD dealership. I'll leave their details down below. If you're looking for more POV drive videos in New Zealand, like something like this, do let me know in the comments and do subscribe and like to support this channel. As always, 
I will see you next video. Thank you very much.